Hi, my name is Linda. I am not a medical professional, and the information in this video is for your information only. If you have any worries about your condition, consult your healthcare professional. In this video, someone asked me, is polymyalgia rheumatica a type of arthritis? In this video, I will explore polymyalgia rheumatica, including its symptoms, diagnosis, causes, risk factors, and much more. First, I will explore the understanding of polymyalgia rheumatica. What is polymyalgia rheumatica? This chronic inflammatory disorder attacks muscles, which can become painful and stiff, particularly in the shoulders, neck, and hips. It mainly affects people over 50 and is more common in women than men. The exact cause to date is still unknown. It is often related to autoimmune processes, meaning your body's immune system mistakenly attacks your healthy tissues. You can treat this debilitating disease with medications such as corticosteroids. Most people can live a full, functional life with appropriate management. Polymyalgia rheumatica, which is similar to rheumatoid arthritis and causes joint pain, was first found in the elderly. It is common among people in Northern Europe, especially Scandinavians. But first, what causes polymyalgia rheumatica? Although the exact cause of this terrible disease is not fully understood, researchers believe it can include an autoimmune response, where the immune system attacks healthy tissues, leading to inflammation. It seems to be caused by many conditions, with risk factors including your age. You are at greater risk if you are over 50. The risk factor can increase rapidly from then on, however, the average age of onset is about 70. Gender Research has found that hormones in women are more susceptible, like estrogen, which may contribute to high risk for women. Ethnicity People of Northern European origin, mainly Scandinavian, are at higher risk. Environmental factors You are at high risk if you live in cold weather, low sunlight, and different infectious diseases may increase the risk. Genetics Polymyalgia rheumatica does not usually run in families, but more evidence should be collected to fully understand if a family history of autoimmune or rheumatic diseases could be a high-risk factor. Other risk factors include smoking. If you smoke, you should stop immediately, as there is evidence that smoking could increase your risk of autoimmune diseases. Trauma or physical stress Physical trauma, surgery, or other stress to your body can trigger the immune system into a delicate state of activity. This can lead to autoimmune inflammation. Therefore, autoimmune diseases such as rheumatoid arthritis or polymyalgia rheumatica, lupus and many more. The symptoms caused by this terrible disease could include muscle pain and stiffness, particularly in the shoulders, neck, and hips, which may worsen in the morning after inactivity. Morning stiffness lasts about 30 minutes and is common in polymyalgia rheumatica. It may worsen daily tasks. Limited range of motion. You may have difficulty moving around because the affected areas are painful and stiff. Fatigue. If you have chronic pain and stiffness, you may experience a general feeling of tiredness or low energy due to a disruption in your sleep pattern. Mild fever. In some cases, you may have a low-grade fever and a general feeling of sickness, but this can be mild. Weight loss and loss of appetite. You may experience unintended weight loss. Weight loss can indicate that your body is under stress from the symptoms of ongoing inflammation, which can also make you feel that you have lost your appetite. When you get diagnosed, it could be a combination of clinical evaluation and tests, which rules out other causes of the symptoms of muscle pain and stiffness. They can include physical examination. First, your doctor will assess your muscle pain and stiffness. Blood tests. Blood tests include erythrocyte sedimentation rate and C-reactive protein, which can show the amount of inflammation. Imaging. Ultrasound can show inflammation in the shoulder, hip joints, tendons, and bursae. You may also have an MRI scan showing the extent of the inflammation in the soft tissues around the affected joints. This diagnosis can also exclude other similar conditions, such as rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, and fibromyalgia. You can manage your polymyalgia rheumatica 
by reducing inflammation and pain and helping your mobility. Unfortunately, this disease has no cure, but it can respond well to treatment, particularly corticosteroids. Therefore, the main goals for treating your polymyalgia rheumatica include 1. Reducing the underlying inflammation that is causing the pain and stiffness. 2. Helping to improve muscle pain and stiffness will help to improve your mobility. 3. Decreasing the side effects, especially from long-term use of corticosteroids. 4. Monitor and manage the potential side effects that you may experience from medications and associated conditions, such as giant cell arthritis. 5. Helping with physical and emotional welfare through lifestyle changes and support. 6. The most important thing is to change your lifestyle. Gentle physical activity and stretching can help maintain muscle strength and flexibility. During corticosteroid therapy, a balanced diet of anti-inflammatory foods rich in calcium and vitamin D is essential for bone health. Continuous medical monitoring by your healthcare provider is essential, as they can manage any side effects you are having and monitor the disease's progress. When you live with polymyalgia rheumatica, your lifestyle changes. The changes can include Going to support groups It would help if you attended all your appointments, such as therapy. Educate yourself, so that you are sure you know your condition. Some tips for managing daily life, morning routine, when you wake up, you may feel stiffness that could be very painful due to staying still while you sleep especially in the shoulders, neck, and hips. The stiffness could last 30 minutes or more, making it difficult to get out of bed. If this happens, you need to gently stretch, put a heat pack like a hot water bottle on the affected joint, or have a warm shower or bath, all of which can reduce the stiffness. Flare-ups. If you are having a flare-up, you should rest your body, avoid strenuous tasks, reduce physical activities, and give your muscles time to recover. Physical therapy, working with a physical therapist can help, as they can create a program unique to you. The physio will help improve mobility and strength, as well as improve your mood and maintain muscle strength. Support networks, it would help if you went to support groups, you can find your nearest one online. Staying socially connected can help with your feelings of depression. Focus on realistic goals on what you can do, not what you cannot. Exercise. Take short walks every day. This helps keep your muscles from stiffness. Diet. A healthy diet can play an important role in reducing symptoms. Anti-inflammatory foods include fruit and vegetables, poultry, whole grains, and oily fish such as salmon. These are all rich in vitamins, minerals, and healthy fats. The conclusion is that polymyalgia rheumatica can be a challenging condition, with proper diagnosis, treatment, and self-care, you can manage your symptoms and live a healthy life. Some of the strategies that can help to reduce your symptoms include, number one, is you must get an early diagnosis. It is also essential to get prompt treatment. Number two, understanding the risk factors and complications, so that you know the symptoms and can prevent serious outcomes such as vision loss or stroke. Number three is managing this long-term disease, which requires tolerance and careful attention to both treatments and lifestyle changes. Number four is essential to monitor side effects from the long-term use of corticosteroids, such as sudden weight gain, osteoporosis, and increased vulnerability to infections. In number five, you should implement a new, healthier lifestyle. This can include low-impact strength exercises, which can help reduce stiffness and maintain muscle strength. Number six, you should get support from your family, friends, and healthcare professionals. Number seven, building a strong partnership with your healthcare team. Always go to your appointments with your healthcare team. Regular check-ins are crucial for ensuring your treatment plan remains effective and safe over the long term. Thanks for listening to my video. I am not a medical professional, and the information in this video is for information only. If you have any worries about your condition, consult your healthcare professional. If you found this video helpful, 
please click the subscribe button to follow my channel and press the bell. If you have any questions, please comment below, and I will get back to you.